We are a Christian internet ministry that can be found at www.cuttingedge.org and we examine today's current events in the light of Bible prophecy. We feel that our website has become very successful. We currently run about 250,000 people per month that visit our site. We also have a bookstore at our site and we are seeing many, many people send back testimonies that tell us that they have gained great spiritual truths and people are even being born again from the gospel message presented at Cutting Edge. So please encourage your friends to go to www.cuttingedge.org and visit our site and see all the information that's there and all the exciting things you can learn about current events and concerning the Word of God. Now in light of that, today we're going to look in our Bibles at a time back close to the, to the creation of mankind back in the book of Genesis. And we're going to do that in order to discover uh, some secrets about what Jesus himself said regarding his second coming. And we want to start out by looking in the book of Matthew in chapter 24 and starting to read in verse 36. Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he was talking about the time of his second coming. Now, we want to clarify right now that this was not talking about the rapture of the church, but rather that this was speaking about his actual second coming and his return to earth. And this is what he had to tell his disciples. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But as, it wa but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, many people have tried to pigeonhole the events of today into this passage of Scripture and say, well, we're in the day just like it was in the days of Noah because of all the sin in the world and everything is going on. However, the only way to come to a complete understanding of what the days of Noah were like, we need to go to the source for the teaching of the days of Noah, and we can find that back in the book of Genesis, and we're going to turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 6. So I would suggest if you... Uh, if you're watching this video, if you would like to grab, uh, uh, stop the video and grab a Bible, you might want to turn with us so you can read these passages along with us because you can find, you will find this, I believe, very interesting and enlightening. And you may not uh, have heard this before, so that's what we're trying to do. We want to give you something new here today from the Word of God. So let's look at Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to start reading in verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. These are the generations of Noah, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Now, we see the scene here as we open Genesis chapter 6 of exactly what was going on when the, um, uh, when the earth was prior to the time of the flood in the days of Noah and when he lived. And so here we have an accurate account of what the days of Noah were really like. And the interesting thing, and, we're, and we'll get right to this, in verse 2 it says, The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Now, we need to determine here exactly who the sons of God were and who the daughters of men were and why it really mattered. But let's go ahead and look at some things here on the board. We see, when we look into the Word of God, the sons of God, which we have written in our English Bible, When, when we look at the Hebrew translation of that phrase, sons of God, we see the phrase, benai ha Elohim. And we know, of course, that Elohim 
is the plural form of God, and we see that several times in the Bible. And this Elohim is the plural of God, that, which speaks of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we see the sons of God here listed as the Benaiah Elohim in the original Hebrew that we get our, our English translation from. Now the daughters of men, if we wanted to look at the actual uh, wording of the Hebrew there, the daughters of men could be better written in our English language, in our English translation, is, as the daughters of Adam is what the Hebrew literally says. So if the Hebrew says we have the daughters of men or the daughters of Adam and the sons of God, let's look here at what the Bible says again. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of whom they chose. Now let's skip down to verse 4, and it says here there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God, the Benaiha Elohim, came into the daughters of men, or the daughters of Adam, and they bare children unto them, the same came, became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, what we have to look at here and what we have to real, what we have to try to determine is who were the sons of God and her, who were the daughters of men? And why, when the sons of God and the daughters of men joined in marriage, did you see children born to them that were giants in the earth? Because that's what it says. It says, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children unto them. The same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. First to verse 4, and there were giants in the earth in those days. Now the interesting thing here is the giants, the word giants in our English Bible, is translated from the Greek word gigantus. Now the reason we get giants and gigantus is because the Greek uh, came, was, uh, was translated in 200 B.C., in the Greek Septuagint. This was actually the Old Testament that Jesus and his disciples used. And the Greek word for this uh, word in the Old Testament that is translated in our English giants was gigantus. And that's why we get giants in our English Bible rather than some other word. But actually in the Hebrew it is a proper noun and it is Nephilim. And so what we have here, if we read the scripture in the uh, in the way that the original language actually read, we can say that there were Nephilim in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same which became mighty men, which were old, men of renown. Now, what has happened here is the sons of God married the daughters of men, and their children were Nephilim. They were also men which were of old. And this this is a very significant phrase because in the occult there is, a, there is a reference to those that lived on the earth many years ago and they were called the old ones. Which were a particular race of, of beings, I don't want to say humans, but a particular race of beings that lived many, many years ago. And a lot of the things we see in the cult, we can't put a lot of stock in, but when it matches up with what the Word of God says, then we have to step back and examine where this and other things from the occult actually came from. So what we have here is the Benai Elohim married the daughters of Adam, they produced Nephilim, and they were mighty men which were of old, or the, or the old ones. Now to get a key, to who the sons of God may actually have been here that the, the Bible is referring to. Let's turn over to the book of Job. And in Job, we find in Job chapter 2, the Bible records this same phrase, the sons of God, starting in Job 2 and verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Wow, now this is really something here that we can sink our, sink our teeth into because we see here that it says there was a day when the sons of God